sunshine now. Some of you might not get up early enough to see it, but it's still out there. <laughs> so, so take a look at it. Um, repeat this after me. Today, Today God is bringing blessings upon us. God is bringing blessings upon us. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. To be alive in God. To be alive in God. Amen. 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 You know, this, this week um, I was driving down College Avenue in Appleton and it's, you know, it got stop and go light, so I had to stop at a red light. And as I'm sitting there, a guy comes up and knocks on my window on the passenger side. And so I rolled down the window and he said, I don't have a job and I'm hungry. Could you spare a dollar for me? So I reached him over and getting out a dollar. I started to hand it to him and I said, you know, I'm going to give you this dollar even though you don't deserve it. But he's, the reason I'm giving it to you, it's going to make me happy. He said, sir, why don't you give me a 20 and make you a lot happier? <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes uh, we just got to count our blessings, you know. So I got a, uh, another story for you this morning. Um, a man was walking down the street and he was carrying two suitcases. And a stranger came up, uh, up to him and asked, he says, do you have the time? And the man put down the suitcases. He looked at his wristwatch and said, it's, ex it's exactly 546, 56 56.6 seconds, and the barometer pressure is 30.06 and rising. And if you'd like to know where you are, the satellite will tell you the position you are. It can show you that too. And I can get into the internet. I can check your email for you. I can make long distance calls for you. I can send a fax for you. And I also, it's a pager. It plays recorded books. And it receives FM radio also. All on that watch. And the stranger said, that's amazing. He says, I got to have that watch. I'll buy it from you. And the guy says, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. It's not ready for sale yet. He says, I'm the inventor and I'm still working out the bugs. The guy says, I don't care. I want to buy that watch. He says, I'll give you $10,000. The guy says, no. He says, I'll give you $15,000. No. He says, I'll give you $20,000. No. He says, well, if you give me $25,000, I'll, I'll give it. I'll sell it to you. So the guy paid him the 25000 The guy took the wristwatch off his hand and gave it to him. The guy started going down the street. The guy picked up his two suitcases. The guy was about a block away. He says, wait a minute, don't you want the batteries? <laughs> he brought a wristwatch for $25,000 with no batteries. <laughs> so, so sometimes we have to uh, just watch and listen to the Holy Spirit you know, that we don't move ahead of our angels. So, um, this morning we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. And, um, you know, we need to do, first of all, um, we need to take a look at God, who God really is. You know, God is today, He's the same today as He was yesterday. And how do we know that? Because the scripture tells us that. Um, <coughs> God says, I am the Lord and I change not. He tells us he changed not. So he's the same yesterday and today. So we can always depend upon God not to change. In other words, we know what he says in the beginning in the Bible. He, it's the same at the end of the Bible. He doesn't change. Uh, Hebrews 13.8 says he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Um, so that, the same thing is true about our tithing. If if we are obedient to God's word, he's the same with our blessings as he was yesterday, as he'll be today. So we, we just know that God never changes. You know, there's a door that's always open for God's blessings for us. And um, so we go through that door with our tithes and offerings. That's how we get there. When, your tithes and when you do your tithes and offerings in the right attitude, you, you got to remember that, in the right attitude, you unlock that floodgates for the, tithe, for the blessings of God to come upon you. You, get, you receive healing, you receive deliverance, you receive, uh, receive peace, 
and, and all those things that go on. The tithing is based on the, on the sowing and reaping. That's what tithing is based on. It's based on that law. God has planned for us as Christians to reap certain benefits in this earth. And, and we do that by our tithes. And, and when we fail to give our tithes, then the hand of God's blessing cannot be upon us. So we want to do that. You know, we know there's a curse in this earth. One, one of those curses can be if we're not obedient to God's word. Those curses could come upon us. Does God put them upon us? No, we put it upon our, our we do it ourselves. We put that curse on, it, on us. So it's, it's, you know, you can look at it like this. If the, uh, God's blessing upon us is like an umbrella. If it's raining outside, you take an umbrella, you put it up, you don't get wet. It's the same thing with our tithes and offerings. If you keep your umbrella over you, you're, you're going to be blessed. Those curses ain't going to come upon you. So that's what we need to do. We need, to, we need that protection. So I hope you brought your umbrellas this morning to receive your blessings and not get rained upon. So Usher's going to come forward. Debbie and the worship team is going to come. And we're going to sing our praises on the Lord and do our tithes and offerings this morning. for the blessings that you put upon us as we keep our umbrella up so that blessings can flow upon us that the curses that's here on this earth cannot come upon us we give you all the praise and glory and honor in jesus precious name amen amen glory to god Say do you believe that to pastor Jan. good morning pastor kenny he is a character we were going through our annual, uh, uh, Sammy had a uh, basketball game, and that was at Freedom High School. And, and they had it in the new gym, two of the games. And then they had it in the old gym where Kenny played basketball, and I was on the prep, what do you call that? I wasn't a cheerleader. No, not even the, just cheering wall on. You know, you get a group of people, and we were one, I was one of them. I must have been loud or something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we, we had a lot of fun, so then last night we took the annual out, our annuals, and started looking at pictures of ourselves, and we're going, oh my goodness. Well, there's some nice notes wrote in my annual from oh, girls. Oh, oh, I didn't know they all liked me that well. Like I said, he asked a girl to go home, and we were going steady. That's trashy. Is that trashy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> All right, we're going to take the word of God and we're going to pray it over ourselves because we want to receive the blessings. Isn't that what you're here for, is to receive the blessings, not the curses? Is that what you're after? Absolutely. Father, I thank Ephesians 1, starting at 17. Father God, I thank you. You are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. I ask and I already thank you that we have your wisdom, your revelation, we have the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding are open and enlightened so that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children. We receive your inheritance and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let's pray in the spirit that the words that come out of my mouth, it's Jesus. I want this all about his word, and I want the anointing from that word in this service. Will you agree? Amen. Then let's pray in the spirit, and then I want the interpretation of it through me. Abba, 
aba koriyete ke ariyo koriyete ke ariyo koriyete aba koriyete ke ariyo koriyete there we just release the word over ourselves we went past our brain right and the word of god was spoken and now you will receive the truth and the truth will set you free continuously because we want to know what our protection is is that what you want to know yeah. do you want to know your inheritance and everything that belongs to you i do i'm constantly doing that so father we thank you now kisha do you have anything to say on intercessors for prayer one thing come on up where is that microphone yep after each time i like her to give a report on the first Friday of the month, and then other people are looking for that. So we're going to send out the phone number to you, the people, on an email, and you can go in and listen and pray along, because I think it's awesome. I don't have a full report, but the one thing that I heard the lady say that was in charge of, she's an attorney, and she uses expert in um, ballots for voting, was that for the whole impeachment process, Call your senators and congressmen. She said she calls her weekly to let them know what she feels about what's going on in our country. Because you need to have your voice heard. Yep. And of course, we still need to pray, but the action that you can take, she said, is to call your senators and congressmen and say you're not happy with what's going on, that they're not following the system. And then what is gonna happen on Tuesday with Reverend Paula Wright, White? I'm not sure it was going to be every first Tuesday. Tuesday of the month. I think first Tuesdays of the month. They're going to have Paula White, which she's a pastor in Florida, and she's one of Donald Trump's, President Donald Trump has put her in place as the spiritual prayer leader for praying for him. Yes. She's going to come on, on the, the conferences and pray with Intercessors for America. So there's a lot of connections that I don't, I don't know how deep all the connections are, but Intercessors for America the last month had the lady that wrote Prayer Availeth Much book. She was on there, she wrote a comment after on the YouTube saying, great prayer, I'm glad I was a part of it. So there's many high level prayer, prayer warriors that are on these calls and experts in the field. Amen, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I like to hear those things because we need to know where we're at. We need to pray because none of you want socialism in this country, do you? But if your voice is not heard, meaning if you don't speak your voice, and I already looked up, you know, like Tammy Baldwin, I'm going to call her, and Senator Johnson, and so on and so on. Because he's being more active now when my friend worked for him. He wasn't as active. I know I asked him that question when we went to that the meeting that they had a, a private meeting and we were invited to it. I think it was about 50 of us, about 50 of us. And I asked the question, why aren't you wrapping your arms yourselves around President Donald Trump? This is when he was start running for president. He was running for the president for, and he was selected for the Republicans. And he says, well, there's some things we don't agree on. And I said, well, you better agree because, you know, he was going to be our president. I know that may have sounded disrespectful to you, but he, we employ him. Amen. You get it? He's working for us. You're paying him. Yeah. We have a right to give the voice. And then uh, people start perking up and say, hey, hey, you know, get her done. Well, he tried to shut that down because he got this little woman, little man there. But I wasn't mad, I just stated my case right, and then after a while, the guy that sang the National Anthem came over and said, boy, that was, I appreciate that. But I put my hand up right away, and I, I was like, just like that. You better call on me, because, you know, he said, and somebody was gonna start, and he said, no, nope, no, nope, she had her hand up. I think he knew he better call on me, because even if somebody else was speaking, I'd tell you the truth. You know what, I'm that little bulldog. When I go after something, I go after it and I'm not gonna let go. And some of you folks are just like that. Amen. You've caught on to the spirit of God and you're not gonna let go, is that true? Amen. God is good, you may be seated. Now, vengeance, what is vengeance? Justice, right? Uh, it, so I'm gonna go into ministering angels this morning and I'm gonna give you, we're gonna play a short testimony and not too long, okay? But listen to this. The, in, in Psalms 11, 7, this is the New International Version. For the Lord is righteous. He loves what? Justice. The upright will see his face. Meaning, 
If there's been an injustice done to you, you call out for justice. How do you do that? Well, right here, I've got a few declarations and I'm gonna get this. I said I'm gonna get this out. Some of it I have, but some of it I have to correct some of the uh, errors. I declare I will speak only positive words of faith and victory over myself, my husband, my family, and my future. Oh, Stacy, you better apologize to, to him right now. <laughs> She said you were the best thing that ever happened to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not let words describe the situation. I will use my words to change my situation. Okay, I declare favor, good breaks, healing, restoration. I will not talk to God about how big my problems are. I will talk to my problems how big my God is. Amen. This is what we want to do. I declare I will choose faith over fear. I will meditate on what is positive and what is good about my situation. I will use my energy not to worry, but to believe. Fear has no part of my life. I will not dwell on the negativity, discouraging thoughts. My mind is set on what God says about me. I know his plans for me and success, victory in abundance, and on and on and on. Speak over ourselves what we want. Now, if the devil gets in your way, you tell him to get out. In the name of Jesus, bind the stronghold. And what is the stronghold? The devil. Remember, he's been defanged and declawed. He's not, God's not going to put him under her feet. He has already put him under his feet. Right? Yes. Because Jesus went on the cross. Right? Yeah. Then where did he take all of our sins? He took all of our sins, our sickness, our poverty, everything into hell, but he left it there. And when he came out of hell, he brought us. See, we went down with him. We were the problem. We were the sick. We were the poverty. We. So he took that all into hell. He left that, but he brought, raised us up together with him and seated us in heavenly places with himself. And he said in Genesis 1.26 again that we're supposed to rule and reign with him. We have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and air over every living thing. Not over each other, but over the enemy. So now it's time for us to step up and take that authority back. So God loves justice. God takes the vengeance. Vengeance means judgment, justice. All right? So what I want to do is I want to show you something real quick, though. God came to us to redeem us from the curse and make us righteous. He came, that's Galatians 3.13. He said, I came, Jesus came to redeem us from the curse. Redeem us from the curse. And did he do that? Yes. Absolutely. Then I'm going to give you a little bit here on 2 Timothy 1.7. This is the Passion Translation. Because there is fear in this country. I, do you have fear sometimes? Does it hit you sometimes and you're like, whoa, and then you get yourself squared away and you go after the thing? Do you do that? Yes. Yeah. I still remember Dee Dee, where they lived up there, this guy with a hood and sweatshirt on. He's walking. Well, you haven't seen her house, some of you, but she's got doors and blah, blah, and you can look quite a ways outside. And um, she sees this guy walking, and I think you had your pajamas on already and house coat. Three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Well, she sees him out there. Do you think she's going to wait for somebody to come and help her? She just like the snake under the sofa. Remember with the two little girls that slept on that sofa? And that father lifted that. Grandfather lifted that. Whoa, because his wife wanted the furniture moved, huh? He didn't stop and think. He just went after the thing. He went and got something and took care of it. So what did Dee Dee do? She went out there and grabbed hold of the guy. Is that right? Mm -hmm. She grabbed hold. What are you doing up here? I think he was on high or something like that. He was on drugs. That was, was Tom there? In bed. He was in bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was in bed. But she didn't have time to go get Tom. She had a, do you understand? Yep. Nothing could touch her, nothing could harm her. She's got the angels protecting her. And the angels would take that sucker out. Well, he was afraid of her, that guy. Second Timothy 1.7 says, For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you, he gives you 
mighty power, love, and self-control. That's what the Holy Spirit gives to us. When you were raised up out of hell with Jesus Christ and seated in heavenly places, but when you said, Jesus, come on into my heart, you went from a raggy tag, hell, Satan was your father. You said, Jesus, come into my heart. You moved into a mansion. And everything that you have need is in that mansion. This is already tap broke down, and you're always trying to fix it. You're always trying to make things right. You're always trying to clean up something. When you get in the mansion, it's all done. And then you rule and reign as a king, like it says in Revelations 1.6. You're a priest and you're a king. You can go before the throne of God, and you stay before the throne, right? And what happened to the, high, to the priest? He went in to the Holy of Holies and, and you know, anointed, uh, for anointing for our sins, for the atonement for our sins. But he left after he did that, right? But we stay in there. We're in there all the time. We're seated in heaven places all the time. Even when you mess up, even when Pastor Jan messes up, I'm still the righteousness of God. I'm still seated in heavenly places. What did Jesus pay for? He paid for all them mess-ups. Then why am I, oh, I'm so bad, I just can't do anything right. What, what are you doing? God says, what is she saying? Tell her to knock it off, Jesus. Oh, you mean I got an angel that goes, knock it off? Does the Holy Spirit tell me to knock it off? Yes, because I am the righteousness of God. He made me the righteous. I didn't make me the righteous. He made me the righteous through his life and death. So I have what he gave me and is a free gift to me but it wasn't free to him all right so now this is for God will never give you the spirit of fear but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power love and self-control God did not give you a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline now the American Heritage Dictionary defines timidity do you want this this, now, did you ever pe see people who are shy or you see shame all over them? Did you ever see that or fear all over them? Hmm? I mean, you get your wife mad. <laughs> Some guys, they got fear all. Aaron looks to <laughs> There's fear. But there's fear. There's fear that comes into us. But that's, that's, that's just like saying, hey, drive that thing off. It's trying to trip you up. It's trying to steal your blessings. That's why God tells you. That's why you get that. So you stop. And so you take control. Now, this is, this is according to 2 Timothy 1.7. What is fear? Fear is being shy. Do you ever somebody? I'm so shy. I can't get up in front of a person and speak. I was like that. I got sick to my stomach. That's horrible. Shake. Where you think you're going to faint. What are you doing, Lord? But God did this. So you're shy. You're fearful and hesitant. Hesitation. This is fear. Hesitation. Uncertain hesitation. Indecisive. Wobbly. Faulting. Oh. Vasculating. Wavering. Fear. Fear. Well, I don't know if I should do this or that. I'm fearful. I'm wavering. I'm going to stand back and see if that's what God's want. If that's what God wants. No, 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 no. Dee Dee did not stop to look at all of that. She just went out there at three o'clock in the morning and jerked that puppy around. Right? The man who had the snake that was under their sofa. What kind of snake was that again? <coughs> a rattlesnake. A big rattlesnake under the sofa. Three-year-old <coughs> granddaughters rested on that during the day because they took care of them, them little granddaughters in the afternoon. Did not hesitate. He knew exactly what was wrong. He knew that was a snake. He knew that was evil. When you know something's evil, you don't have to stop and pray about it. You just take it out. You know, uh-huh, amen. So shy means backward, coy, demeanor, D-E-M-U-R-E, -E, bashful. Oh, I'm so bashful. No, 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 no. 
Self is facing, I don't understand that, but different. Paul was encouraging Timothy. Timothy was drawn back into fear. Remember Paul was correcting him? And Paul was admonishing him. Fear is something all of us deal with. Okay, courage isn't the absence Courage isn't the absence of fear, but the refusal to give into it. Did you get that? Courage isn't the absence of fear, but the refusal to give into it. You're going to get that fear, but you're not going to give into it. Paul in 2 Timothy 1.6 wanted to stir Timothy up by reminding him of what he had. Every true believer has also received the same things from God. Shyness or timidity, we know that's not from God, right? But we need to stir up the gifts that we have in us. So shyness or t timidity isn't just being afraid of what others think of us. It's a root of pride. I never thought of that. Or self-centeredness. Andrew Womack has a book on self-centeredness. It's, is that it? Is it? Yeah, it's, it's a delicious book. If you haven't read it, read it, because it's really good. I know I read it, and I thought, oh, you're right on there, boy. And uh, so the root of pride is self-centeredness. It's all about me, right? And I want everybody to know it's all about me. Now, everybody rush around me and take care of me, because I have this problem. That's not faith. That's fear. But guess what? The devil's going to beat you up. But now... When you do not fear, you tell the devil to get off in the name of Jesus. And that puts your angels to work. And the angels will take care of it for you. Because become secure that God Almighty loves you no matter what. Then fear of man will have no place in our lives. So fear is going to come, but are you going to cooperate with it? Are you going to continue to wallow in self-pity? Didn't we all do that at one time? Do you ever see a kid do that? It's really sad. But a kid, but when you get an adult doing it, it looks sadder. So Paul was presenting fear is the opposite of power, love, and sound mind. So he was saying fear is the opposite of power. So if you stay in that fear, that is going to rule and reign over you, and you're in big trouble. I don't want that. Truly, if we are in fear, we are rendered powerless. Do you get that? We're rendered powerless. Fear saps our strength and causes us to submit to things we never would if we were not in fear. Did you? Isn't that something? Somebody says, if you don't do it. Did you ever have that little kid? Do you remember Christmas story again? Remember the bully? Remember, what was the bully's name? He had red hair. Scott Perkins. He had, remember, what was his yeah, name? Scott Perkins. Yeah. And, 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 and what was the main guy? Ralphie. Ralphie. He had put up with these, this, this little squatty boy, they call him Toady. And they had put up and put up with these two, just picking them on. Remember that? Anybody see that story? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'll play it for you. <laughs> I love it because it's so funny. Pretty soon, Ralphie just, he's like, like there's, there's steam coming out of his nose, not really, but out of his mouth, I can see it. And, he's, and all of a sudden, he takes after him and he starts beating him up, gets him up, scares him off. He's smaller, of course, but he had had it. Ooh, I've had it from the devil. He's not going to move on my account. There is no love in fear and no fear in love. So when you love God and you realize and you see that you have got the authority, that you have the angels, you have a personal angel watching over you to lead and guide you. But if you don't believe it, you won't have it. What you don't believe, you will not possess. So. So they are opposites. Fear and love are opposites, just like north and south are opposites. So they are opposite emotions and, mature and mutually <coughs> exclusive. Fear also causes us to think emotionally and not logically. 
That's why I say, you know, I used to be an emotional person. If you get into your emotions, you're going to lose. You're going you're to lose if you get into emotions. You're going to grab hold of those emotions and say, uh -uh. no, no, devil, not today. Because he's just going to dump more crap in front. Did I say that right? More junk in front of you. More dung in front of you. And you might trip in and that's not good. Fear is a deadly and something that we should not tolerate in our lives. It's going to come. It's going to come. But the minute it comes, what are you going to do? You're going to speak the word of God. You're going to give it force. How do we give it force? Our voice is a force. That we release the word of God, it's the word of God that does the work. It's not us. He does the work. Thank God the battle is the Lord's, right? Fear is a deadly thing. And something that we should not tolerate in our lives. Fear activates the power of the devil, devil, similarly to the way faith releases power to God. Even though you have fear, you speak the word, you release power. Even though you have fear, release power and get over it. So a sound mind is having self-control and self-discipline. That means stop and think. Stop and think. Really, if Dee Dee would have really stopped and thought, that guy could have had a gun or a knife and cut her up. She didn't have to stop to think. She's got an angel that would whip that guy, and she knows it. Got it? Yeah. When you walk in fear, you walk powerless. You've got to remember them. Those who walk in his power will serve others in love and lead lives of discipline. When you walk in love, trusting God's word, you will get to your destiny and the devil's power will be destroyed. You want, you want peace in your home? It work, This works. This works. Sound mind means discipline, self-control. Biggest thing I think we all have is our mouth and the dung that spills out when we get an emotion. No? When you get an emotion, what comes out of your mouth? what's in your heart. But that's why you have to store up treasures, the word in your heart, so that's what comes out when there's danger. Right? right. The Amplified Bible translation of this verse is God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving, and cringing and frowning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power of love. A power of love. Love God so much that you trust he's going to take care of it. That's the love of God. Everything I do, I trust in him. I trust in the Lord with all my heart, only not on my own understanding. If there's something I can't control, Lord, I give it to you, and that's everything I can't control. I give it to you. I thank you for taking it in Jesus' name. And I pray in the spirit. Why do I pray in the spirit? Because I want to edify myself. Were you ever sad? Were you ever sad? Edify yourself. That's God's prescription. Pray in the spirit. Praise and worship him. Oh, he's so good. So he's saying to us, he didn't give us a spirit of cowardice, of craving and cringing and frowning fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. He gave, Why aren't we using it? It's so simple. And have the peace of God that rules and reigns. And everybody will come around you. They'll want to be with you. They'll just want to be with you because you're from fun country because you know the rules. You know if you're obedient to God's word, you got it made. That's all you have to do. You don't have to understand it all. You just speak God's word, and the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. And it's releasing that power in your life but around you. You know, it's, it's delicious. God is good. So now... I want to I wanna play something, but first I got to tell you this here. It says in a footnote that, that is, fearing man, the fear of God prevents us from fearing others, meaning awe, that fearing them is to awe God and take his word first. We know what Matt, Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, everything will be given unto you. So when you do that, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Every good thing is going to come to you. Uh, the Aramaic can be... The aromatic, am I saying that right, can also be translated 
revelation, light, or instruction. Okay, so God is saying that we should operate in the light of God's word. We, we operate in the light of God's word. See, his word will be a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. When you pray in the spirit, he will do things for you you never thought possible. But he's given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Listen to this. In Psalms 103.20, the New King James, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are these angels? What, 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 what? Many people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We know that, don't we? It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you, the, we're priests now. He has made you a priest. It says that in Revelation 1, 6. You are a priest, meaning that you're in the holy of holies because of Jesus Christ, because you're right, righteous in Ephesians 2, 6, that you're seated in heavenly places in him. So you're there. Don't take yourself out of there. Don't come down and try to straighten all things. You don't have to. You're a king. What does a king do? What did King Jesus do? He put everything under our feet. He took care of it all. And when a king speaks and it becomes a law, well, King Jesus gave us the law, and it's the word of God here. And when we speak that law, it becomes a reality. It's released. We got a voice activated. I should say, it is voice activated when we speak that word. When you say, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind, self-discipline. You know what you're doing to your angels? You're putting them to work. Or let's say you've got somebody praying for you. We pray, we pray over each other. That's important to me. So now, um, I, I just have to get this here to you. In Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, and God has never said to any of his angels, now listen to this, take your seat next to me at my right hand. He's talking about the angels. You get that video ready, the first one, okay? right hand, until I force your whispering enemies to be a rug under my feet. Now, it's already finished. It's already finished. Jesus Christ already put the enemy under our feet. That's what he did at the cross. When he went into hell, he left all the sins, all the dirt down there, right? All of our problems. Today, next week, next year, Everything is out there. You're redeemed from the curse forever. Even though you, now Pastor Jan, if you go rob the bank, are you still the righteousness? Yep, yep, I'm still the righteous. Well, you're gonna walk free then with all that money. Yep, no, there's a consequence. Because when you open the door to the devil, he's gonna come in and he's gonna sit down and feed you lunch. I like how Andrew Momick said, give you your lunch and he'll pop the bag too. You know, we just can't give in to the, we have got such powerful stuff, it's awesome. But would you turn on the lights please? And Keegan, are you ready to pray those, play those two short testimonies? I think they're terrific. Turn this down please. Who's gonna get the lights? Hey, where's my ushers? Somebody. Okay. All right, turn them, okay. Let's get this testimony, Pastor Kenny's. Do we have an angel? Yes, I realized I had an angel back when I was working on a three-story apartment building breaking, and it was about 25, 30 feet up in the air on scaffolding, and it was muddy, I had mud on my feet, and I slipped on the scaffold and fell off the backwards on the scaffold, and it was on a river bank, and before I ever hit the ground, my angel brought me back in on the scaffold. This was before I was saved, so that made me realize there's angels working for us. I'm just saying that we need to praise God for things in our lives 
you know, and to me, that song, I'm alive because of Jesus Christ, every time we sing that in church, an incident comes back to my mind of reason why I'm alive, and it's because of Jesus Christ. And so you praise him? Yeah. Now, now we know that we have angels, but do we, re because you know, we've got these little cute angels we put on our lapels. Did you ever see them? Yeah. I just want to take them and... Len Mink, when we were at the school yet, come to our church, and he saw an angel way up, I, was this in an auditorium, I believe it was? He saw a big old angel up there with eyes that were just turning and looking all over. It wasn't fearful. It was awesome. It was peaceful. You have a guardian angel, and it's awesome. Just think, here's Pastor Kenny, and he's up. How many scaffolds up? About four or five, you said? 25, 30 feet up. About 25, 30 feet up on scaffolding, okay? It was a bit bad out, so the muddy and, you know, underneath. And all of a sudden, he said he fell off backwards. He fell off backwards. Well, what do you think is going to happen if you fall off backwards? And the last night he said, you know, Jan, I, I was sure I was going to fall right on my head. And all of a sudden, something took him and put him on one of the lower scaffoldings. Almost on the bottom one, is that what you were? Yeah. And he knew because he knew how long after that it was an angel. Right? Now, remember the, the true story I gave you last week about the guy that was flying and the clouds and the, it just really got heavy in the whole yard. Remember that? And, and all of a sudden, the, the, their, their landing system from the, what you call it, was cut off, so he, he didn't have anybody to help him get through the clouds and land. He didn't have enough gas in the plane. I'm assuming it was a small plane. So he's just going, and he's heading for a busy highway. He's in the clouds that he can't see. Does that sound right, Mark? Mark flies. And so all of a sudden this voice says, pull up, pull up. He heard this voice, pull up, pull up. And he did. It just gives me the cold chills when I read the story. And you remember the story. He landed uh, safely. But what happened when he went to try to get to them again. They said, hey, we've been cut off. We, we haven't been able to speak to you. That wasn't us. That wasn't us that were telling you to pull up. The radio has been off, boy. He knew it was an angel of the Lord. You know how the God will put that on to you? Yeah. See, God will, because he heard voice. He heard that pull up, pull up, and he, that's what he did. But when you think it, and that's not the only testimony Pastor Kenny has, and we're going to do more things like that. So when you have a testimony, we're just going to take it, put it on your cell phone, and get him out here. Because when, you, when he came home, and he, I don't think he told me about that day. I think it was a couple of days, and he told me he was just, I can't believe this happened. I, I, you know what happened to me? No. And I'm going, whoa. I was born again, but he wasn't born again. But can you only imagine an angel, one angel? I couldn't, could you stop a man from falling? He was a lot heavier than what he is now. But all of a sudden he's standing up, he fell off backwards. You don't do a and stand up. He knew that it was a God thing. Don't be looking for angels, don't do that. God will do that. God will do that. We don't pray to the angels. We speak the word of God, and when we say in Jesus' name, that activates the angels to take his word because that's the way God made it, okay? So I'll, I'll read this to you again. In Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. Does that get you excited to hear a testimony like that? He's got some marvelous, oh, he's been through it. Whew. Um, Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, Passion. And God has never said this to any of his angels. Take your seat next to me at my right hand until I force your whispering enemies to be a rug under my feet. What role then do the angels have? This is verse 14. The angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve those who are going to be 
saved. Did he get saved from death? Did he? Yeah. <coughs> he could have been in, uh, that's a That's a long ways up. But you have an angel that will protect you and lead and guide you. Wow. In Hebrews <coughs> 2, 2 and 3. If the message of the law spoken and confirmed by angels brought a just penalty to every disobedient violation, then how would we expect to escape punishment if we despise the very truth that's given us life? The Lord himself was the first to announce these things, and those who heard him firsthanded confirmed their Accuracy. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This is what it's saying, angels. And if we do our part, they're going to do yours. Because if I'm running and running and running, I'll, I'll use that if your kids, your kids are running away from you. If you know, you saw that. Kid is running, and if they're close to the street and they don't obey, and they get hit by a truck and you sue the truck driver, are you the stupid one? Why? because you did not train them. But you folks train. You train your kids. You listen to me the first time. Because then you'll listen to God the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, we are warned not to drift away from the power of our great salvation, to be saved, healed, made whole. We're warned against that. We are warned about failing to enter into the faith rest life with the failures, you look at like the Israelites in the wilderness, the example of what they did. They didn't enter in to Canaan line. They, they just thought they were so smart. After everything they saw, those plagues in Egypt, and they still came against and defied God. But hey, we're no different. God is showing us things and showing us things, and what do we do? Well, this time I'm going to do it myself. You know, I'm strong enough now. I'm having a good day. And I get slapped up good. I depend upon God for everything. I do. I can't do it other ways. I don't like life without him. When we were sitting there yesterday in that dream, and I remember what an old drunk I was then already. Alcohol and smoking, thinking we look so hot. I look stupid. That's not the way to live. And then already I was suicidal. I had already, I think, one nervous breakdown at that time already. Two more after that. Going to do it on my own, right? That's not. When I came to know Jesus Christ, boy, oh boy, I put on that armor and I just, oh, I was like, you shouldn't have did that to me. Now that's really got me mad. Anybody ever do something to you and you say they're never going to do that again? Well, you got to look at the devil that way. You don't look at people that way. You look at the devil that way. And you take that sucker out. And he says, okay, we are warned to be devoted to the full assurance of our hope until life's end. We are warned not to sin willfully after we've received the truth. Now, if I know, if I know that going to the bank and robbing it is wrong and I go do it, do you think I'm in trouble? Does that mean I'm not very smart? <laughs> we are given the warning of God's correction as our faithful father, we are warned not to close our hearts to the voice of the one who speaks from heaven, the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, how can we escape such great salvation if we're not believing that we have an angel that leads, protects, and guides us? The Holy Spirit and the angels are in cahoots. You know that, don't you? But the angels don't sit. They're your servants. That's how classy. Are we classy? Yes. Are we classy? Yes. Oh. You, know, you know what struck me this morning? We, we did a little shopping Friday. Ooh, girls, we missed some of you. You missed us even worse, I know. Lady Savannah's is one of my favorite shops up in Green Bay. It's by Home Decor, the Grapevine Cafe next door. And, 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 but this morning, this came to my mind. You know, when they were fishing, there was all those little boats around there. 
And who pulled all those fish in? Doesn't anybody remember? Who, Peter? Pulled all those fish, but there was a bunch of little boats that all got blessed too. Whenever people are with you where you go, you're gonna get deals and they're gonna get it too. That's what the Lord told me. So we're there and it was a $117 vest, was that? No, it was more than that. $119 vest for $10. Would that, is that a blessing? Yes. An $89 top for $10. I never ever seen a sale at Lady Savannah's like I saw you. Never. Boots, leather boots, 75% off. I like that. Everywhere I go, oh, people want to know where I get it from. Through the word. I just thought I'd put that in. Well, you're, you're still at freedom. <laughs> That, there was our song at Freedom Everywhere I Go, people want to know who I was. Yeah. So I tell them, I am the Irish, mighty, yeah. mighty Irish, everywhere I go, oh, never mind that. Okay, in Psalms 103.20 again. So the Lord, the, so bless the Lord, all his messengers of power. For you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of his word. He is listening, that your angel is standing there, is waiting for your voice to speak God's word. And when you speak God's word, that's voice activating that angel to do what you spoke. Now, if you speak Satan's word, opposite of the word, what do you get? Satan, he'll, he'll lead and guide you. Angels obey God's word. Angels will obey God's word. When you speak it, your voice is activating that angel from the word of God. When we are walking in the word, God's protection is upon us in Psalms 91. So, but I just, I've got to share this with you. I got this out of the commentary too, and you'll love this. Like this morning I was praying, I pretty much have it all memorized, Psalms 91, and I put my own words in it so it's hard for somebody to follow me, you know, at times. But in Psalms 91, when you go into that, in verse 11, it says, God send, Angels, God send angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. We've got the Holy Spirit. We're seated in heavenly places. We've got the angels that are standing at attention. Standing at attention. They don't sit. They never sleep. But where are you? He said you are seated in heavenly places. You are a king. So you're seated in heavenly places and you're speaking the word. Voice activating everything that you want in your world with yourself, with your children, with your neighborhood. Why not? Notice, this is the commentary now. Notice that the Lord gives charge to his angels on our behalf. The Lord does it. I used to with the religion I was in I prayed to the angel, angel of God, my guardian, dear. No, no, and I won't go on, we don't need to. You don't pray it to your angel. Don't, no, 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 we don't pray to anybody but to the Father in Jesus' name, as it says in John. Some teach that we command the angels to protect us, but I don't believe that this commentary says that, and this is Andrew Womack's commentary, that this is the way it works. We aren't smart enough to command our angels. I, I, that's true. Much of what angels do is preventative. That's why you've got them. Lift you up, use to dash your foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. The guy with the plane, what would have happened? He's telling him, pull it up, pull it up. Crash, prevention. We don't know we are in trouble until after the fact. So how could we command them properly? Jesus said, children's angels behold the face of their father in the heavenly, heavenly continuously. That's Matthew 18.10. They do his commands and hearken to the voice of God's word. Psalms 103.20. Jesus is the word of God. 
John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that was Jesus. So that's John 1, 1, and verse 14. Angels followed the directions of Jesus. Angels followed the direction of Jesus. Satan tried to use this verse to tempt Jesus into throwing himself off the pinnacle of the temple, and that's in Luke 4, 10. But he left out a very important part of the scripture. He didn't quote, in all thy ways. God's power doesn't work for us when we are doing our own thing. Get that? Oh, I'm going to do it my way. I can do it anything I want. Sucker, you're getting the life sucked out of you. I can't, I can't even breathe without, breathe without God. I'll cut off your air. What would happen? You would die. How many minutes would that be? It wouldn't be long. He even gives us the air to breathe and the lungs to use it. So Psalms 91.1 says, and walking in his ways for the blessings of this psalm to work. So when we pray, remember I tell you, read Psalms 91 every day. If you forget it for a day, he's, he's got you covered. But keep this first place because that's a preventative thing and you're putting the angels to work. So Satan took away from this verse and added to the next verse in Psalms 91.12. In an attempt to distort the true meaning of Scripture, he is still doing the same thing today, isn't he? What does he want to do? The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. So the angels, folks, are listening, but the word of God that we speak is what they're listening for. And when you say, well, right here, I'll give it to you, Psalms 103.20. Bless the Lord, ye angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word, his word, his word, not your word, his word, but you're giving it voice. And when you speak it, you're going to see some powerful things happen. In Luke 12, 8, also I say to you, Whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels. <gasps> Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. So Jesus is the one that's, that's giving this operation, this word to the angels. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. If you think you're going to go around God or the, or, you know, and speak directly to the angels, get a real life. That isn't the way God said. It all has to be through Jesus, because Jesus Christ died and he rose again. So we, when, we speak, when we speak contrary to the word of God, what does that do to our angels? What does it, what does it, when we speak contrary to the word of God, what does that do to our angels? It hinders them. It stops them, and they've got to go, Aww. And there, there, Debbie and Dee Dee and, and Dee and all of you got angels. And they said, let's go over my Pastor Jan. She's more fun. And they come over and her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I can see them coming. I need them all. But the one says, go back. We'll wake those up. We'll stir those guys up too. Well, anyway, um, that's the way God designed the angels to minister. We have to go by the way he designed them. You're not so smart to think you can do it without him. I don't know. I can't. So my word is my will for man is what God said. His word is his will for us. Matthew 5.37 says, Let your yes be simple, yes, and your no be simple, no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. So he's saying the yes and amen, and it's guaranteed. In the word, the word is guaranteed. Where do I find that in Corinthians? And do I find that in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 1.22. 1 Corinthians 1.22. He's guaranteed the word. Okay? Then it says in Matthew 12, 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye be evil 
How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's why, you know, you're a calm, cool, collective person. Do you ever see people that are really calm and cool, and then they get angry and this garbage comes out of their mouth? That's what's really in their heart, guys. That's why you've got to put the word of God in your heart. Because what will come out is garbage. I just, I would like to just sometime just poke your bear once and see how angry you get and see what comes out of your mouth and I'll tell you what you need to put into you. Right? There will be dung that will come out when we, anger will come out, viciousness will come out. You'll swear at people and you'll get angry at people and you put people down and you're, you just see too many Christians doing that. That's not the way God ordained it to be. Right? So we, you, oh, you generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what comes out of the mouth is really what you believe in your heart. That's what you're operating out of. A good man, 35. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak what is idle? Idle is the opposite of God's word. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. When is your day of judgment? Yeah. Right now. When you speak it, you get judged right there on that spot. Because you're already going to heaven. But you'll get judged according to your words right there. If I say, um, um, I'm sick, I'm going to get judged right there. The devil says, oh, thank you, opens the door, and just whips it on me all the more. But I'm sick and I say, by the stripes of Jesus, First Peter 2.24, I was here. It's done. It's done. It's done. And you're going to fight the good fight. And what is the fight? It's in your mind. That's the battlefield. It's in your mind. 37, for by, the, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by your, your words thou shalt be condemned. There are many instances in the Bible where the people um, were supernaturally delivered by the ministry of angels. I, how many of you had read uh, Charles Capp's book on angels? This is, I'm getting a lot of this from him, but I'm getting some from Copeland, and um, Gregory Dickow has some things too that I have books from. It's, it's just very good. So now Revelation uh, 5.11 says two more here. And then we're landing here. I, I beheld, I heard the voice of many angels round and about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 oh, times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. God's got more than enough but one angel. And in the Old Testament, what did he slew? 6,000? 6,000. One angel with an ox bone. So now, Hebrews 1, 11. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? Are you the heir of salvation? It tells you in the Galatians. You are the heir of salvation. You are the heir of salvation. You're an heir. You know what? Uh, Kim is my heir. Kenny Jr. and Debbie, B., she's my heir. Keisha, we got you in the family. You're our heir. Dee Dee, you're our heir. All of you are in God's family. You're the heir of salvation. You've got it all. He said, you just got to take it. But we're destroyed for lack of knowledge because we don't believe it or we don't take it. Or how much time do we spend in the word getting what it says and then keep that in our heart and practice on it? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You try to eat it all, you'll choke. So when you take this and you start putting scripture upon scripture and get that understanding of who you are, all right? Who is your servants? The angels are your servant. Who is your comforter, your counselor? The Holy Ghost. Oh. And what is Jesus? He's your healer. He's your healer. He is so awesome. There is nothing impossible for my God unless I stop it. Do you think that's right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was from, I, I don't know how to pronounce, 
Bishop David Obito, Obido, Obipo, from in, from where is he? From Africa, someplace. Yeah, but he's he's okay. He's got some. He says, Father, in the name of Jesus, plead the cause of this church and fight those that fight against her. Continuous growth resulting in the continuous influx of record-breaking multitudes all through this year and beyond. He's got one after another. Now, remember, as I gave you before, some of the things that you speak over yourself. And again, you got to We'll send it to you in an email. It's up to you if you download it and use it. What I do is take some of them that I like, and those I like. This morning I was going in there. I, de I declare right now that every negative word, every curse that is ever spoken over me, I break them in Jesus' name. Right there it's broken. Amen. Okay? I declare I believe in the realm, in the spiritual realm, Things have been set into motion. Curses have been broken and blessings are on their way. And there's one right after another. Now when you speak those words over yourself, when you just say, Jesus' name, you know what? Your angels say, I'm busy again. I love this. I think the angels are kind of showing off with you all. They're looking at the angel and saying, you're still standing there? We're having a ball. Can I change? Can I get on your team? No, you got to stay there. So we pray for those. Because they need to get stirred up in their spirit of what they have. How many of you are satisfied? If I gave you a $100 bill, would you be satisfied with it? Oh, no, I want to say this. What if Jeff Nielsen here gave you $100? Would you be satisfied with it? No, no, you wouldn't be? No. Oh, oh. And then Pat comes along and she says, I'll give you a thousand. Would you be satisfied with that? No. Really? Pastor Kenny says, I'll give you a million. Would you be satisfied with that? No. Why? Because there's more to be had. There's more to be had. He's got it. So if you, now this isn't for selfish purposes, you know, alone. You want to feather the kingdom of God. Isn't that what you're doing? You're feathering the kingdom of God and you can speak it through your word so that you can spend more time on his word, loving on him, getting to know him. The, the person that says, oh, I've got just enough for me, I'm happy. Then God says, I can't give it to them because they don't want it. Because you just stated your case. You said, I have more than enough. I don't need any more. Did you ever think of that? So the angels go, oh, no. Oh, somebody's got to stir them up. They don't judge you. They are merely serpents. They don't talk back. They just wait for the voice of the Lord. You mess up, and the devil comes and takes that. That's why you want everything that comes out of your mouth to be uplifting progressing in the word of God. Declare, decree, and declare a thing. That's what, what we're supposed to do. He said, give a few of these. I, I will do that. You're going to say this after me. Are you ready? Yes. I declare. I declare. I speak only positive words. I speak only positive words. Of faith. Of faith. And victory. And victory. Over myself. Over myself. My husband. My husband. My family. My future. My future. I will not let your words, I will not let your words describe, the situation. describe the situation. I will use my words to change my situation. Oh, let me see. Do I want that one? Nope. Okay. I declare. I declare. I am blessed with promotion. I am blessed with promotion. With success. With success. And an obedient heart. And, obedient and heart. with a positive outlook. With a positive outlook. Now, that's the word of God. That's the word of God. So now, when you say in Jesus' name, what did you just release? So now, in Jesus' name, because Jesus just released it to the angels, to your service, to the ministering spirits. They never sleep, they never slumber. Isn't that nice? The devil gets in your way, what do you do? 
get out in the name of Jesus. I want, I raise a hallelujah. He just said that, Debbie, come on up. I raise a hallelujah. That's what we need to raise to our God. When you praise it, I, I, you know what? Again, I'm going to tell you, when I hit the wall, the first thing I hit, if I'm sad, if I'm sorrowful, I don't care what's going on, you know what I'm going to do? What do you think pastor's going to do? I'm going to praise in tongues. I'm going to pray in tongues because that's going to edify me. Stand up. That's going to edify me. And why am I going to praise? Because I know it's all taken care of. It's all taken care of. Is that true? Okay. Let's do it, Debbie. You too is with Christmas coming on and so on, is we got the greatest gift that we could ever give anyone. Do you know that? Do you know what that gift is? What is the greatest gift you could ever get? Oh, a billion dollars. No, that won't keep you long. That won't get you to heaven, sucker. Uh-uh. That'll drain you. We see too many rich, rich people, right? What is the best gift, the only gift in the whole world that is worth more than money can ever pay for? Salvation. To say, Jesus, come into my heart. Do you agree? Do you agree? That's all we have to do. Because on the back of this card, I gave this to some of the other day, and they said, whoa. Yeah, but just think, if you were to die today, where would you go, heaven or hell? You make the choice now. You're not going to leave here and think you're going to go to purgatory and get prayed out because you know what? Dee Dee is really, really something else and it's going to take her a billion years to get prayed out. And I'm not going to last long enough to pray all that and light all those candles. Oh, did I say that, Dee Dee? She's, she's not looking too good at me. I think I better stop picking her. How about you, Mark? Can I pick on you? Are you pickable? But just think, just think. That, that, is, that is a question we can ask. Three things you need to know. We've all sinned. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. What, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you say, Jesus, let's all do that so the people here online as well. Say, Jesus, Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. I want you, I want you as, my father. as my Father. I receive you, I receive you. in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Amen. Now that's something to dance about. When you get, I don't know how many people are in heaven already because God is using me as a conduit, but I can't wait to see. Because somebody tells somebody else and somebody tells somebody else, right? Yeah. Look at Billy Graham. Oh, what an awesome thing. But now God tells us to take this communion, take this wafer, take this bread. Take this bread. And he says, remember what I did at the cross? Remember, I took all the stripes. I took every sickness. I took all your poverty. I took every depression. I took every nasty thing that, that the devil has out there. I've taken it all. And he said, I went into hell and I left it there. For, don't forget that, he says. Don't forget that you have been made the righteousness of God. This is for born-again believers. It really is. So when you break that, let's break it together. You are the righteousness of God. But the bread, the bread did the healing. Amen. Did everything physical for you that you can't do. That's what the bread did. Remember that. And take it by faith. Everything he did, it belongs to you. Let's take it. Then, when you take the grape juice, what are you taking that for? Because his blood is what made you the righteousness of God. His blood, not your blood, his blood that now flows in your veins, meaning it's made you sinless, made you perfect, made you, even though you mess up, it made you that way. That's so hard to wrap your mind around, isn't it really? I just, I don't have to every day lay at the altar every time I come to church or, and, and say, Lord, I'm so for, sorry for all my sins. Yeah, there's things I have to repent of. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do I ever have to day, every day beg for salvation? He said, I can't bring him back up again. 
He said, once it's done, it's done. He's already done it because you've asked him into your heart. It belongs to you. You are free. Do you receive that? Amen. Let's drink. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah to the King of glory. Hallelujah to the King of glory. Hallelujah. Yes, I heard that. Anybody need healing? I'm going to ask, because we have people around that we're going to have pray. Nobody needs healing? Nobody needs anything? Well, then you're good to go. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have released your word here, and we have taken it in, and we will live it, and we will see victory. Do you agree? Do you want victory in every area? You, you want to just, just to get past a little bit? Or do you want the overflow? overflow? Now, you know when we start decorating for Christmas, Pastor Jan likes overflow and things big. Huh? You know why? Because that's the greatest day to me. And you say, well, Easter is. That's okay, too. That's great, too. But that's when the Savior came in, and it probably didn't happen in, the, in December. Because if it was too cold, the shepherds wouldn't be in the field. But that's what we're celebrating, so get over it. We're celebrating. <laughs> well, I just straighten me out later, Debbie. You shake on me. And I shouldn't pick on her. I shouldn't pick her. Yeah, yeah. Michael Young, you're gonna straighten her out for me, okay? He knows karate. He'll karate to you. One day we'll we'll go we'll spar in karate. I'll get somebody to do it in my behalf. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you. We thank you. We give you. And Father God, the Packers are playing against who? Not the Raiders, right, Tim? <laughs> who are they playing against? Chargers. Oh, the Chargers. We have to beat them too. Okay, Father, we just give it to them. But we want every one of our players saved, every one of the Chargers, we want these men saved in the name of Jesus and their families. And no injuries on either team. And I thank you. We are blessed coming in, we're blessed going out, we're the head and not the tail. Every place we put our feet, we are blessed. Amen. Everything we put our hands to, in the precious name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Amen. 